So, I'm going to do something real short today, but last demo I showed you how to bring your alphabet letters in, right? And what I'm going to show you today, you don't have to do, but you might want to do it. So I'm going to teach it to you so that you at least have the flexibility, you at least have the ability to, or to know that you can do this. Um, and it's, it's actually pretty simple. So you've got these frames, right? And we talked about these frames and, and um, I uh, made a couple of them and I was very precise in how, mu you know, how far away I put them and, and all that and I centered everything. And rectangles can get kind of boring though, don't you think? I mean, they can. Um, <clears throat> let me just, uh, I had um, these letters in here, so let's just pop some letters in here so we can see them. All right. So there's an M. This is looking familiar. So basically what I want to, to show you today is how to take these uh, frames and how to make them a little less boring. And to do that, you need to understand how they're made. So let me just put this last letter in here. And, uh, you know, some of these, some letters may lend themselves to this process better than others. Um, these are okay, but I don't really see any letters that I would go, oh, I have to have a different si shaped frame for them. Um, but there are different shaped frames. Um, if you just go over here to the um, frame tool and you click, you have an ellipse frame tool. You have a polygon frame tool. You can, so you can make circular frames for your letters. You can, you can do all sorts of things there. But even beyond that, hi, even beyond that, what you can also do is you can also modify the frames that you've already drawn. Okay, and that's actually very easy. If you take, um, well, let me ask you this. What's the definition of a straight line? Remember this from geometry class? What's the definition of a straight line? It is the shortest distance between two points. Right, exactly, the shortest distance between two points. Now, when you're talking about how InDesign makes these frames, it's exactly the same thing. What you have is you have these straight lines. These straight lines are built as the shortest distance between two points. If I take the white selection tool here, the white selection tool allows you to do a couple of different things. One, it allows you to click on the image inside the box and move it around. But one of the other things it allows you to do, if you can see here really quickly, is it allows me to hover over a point that has been, until this moment, invisible that is at the corner of the frame. So if I hover over that, let me zoom out here, and I grab that point, I can now change the shape of my frame. Now, that's not so good for our letter, is it? That's basically, you know, you can't see the letter at all. However, <clears throat> what I can also do is I can change the type of point we have. So let me put this kind of back into its position here. There are three different kinds of points that you can have in a frame. First, is a straight corner point. So like we have here, I've got a corner point, the straight line. Well, actually what I should say is this is an even straight corner point. So the line comes in and it comes out and um, the lines are straight coming in and out of the point. I can go and I can convert this point using the tool that's hidden underneath this little pen tool. So I'm going to click, and I'm going to go down here, ooh, convert direction point tool. Now what I can do, you'll like this, is I can go hover over my point and click and drag and it's going to make a curved line point. Now if I look at this, <clears throat> let me get back to this, 
And you can see how this is a smooth corner point. Well, not even a corner, it's a smooth point. And what that means is that the lines coming in are curved and coming out are curved, but they're smooth, there's no corner. And these handles here change the shape of the lines coming in and out of the point. So you can see that, and the really important thing is that on a smooth point like this, they are set together. So when I move the handle, the line coming into the point and the line coming out of the point basically have to affect each other to keep that point smooth. However, there's one more thing I can do. I can go back to my convert point tool and I can go in and I can grab the little point that's on the edge of the handle and I can break these handles away from each other and now I have a curved line corner point. See? Now once you're doing this, if you're maneuvering these points around, <clears throat> one of the things that you want to do is you, you convert the point with this tool, but you don't want to manipulate it with this tool too much because as I continue clicking on it, it will then cycle through my three points. So if I click on it again, I go back to my straight line in, corner point, click again, it gives me the smooth point. You gotta click and drag, by the way. And if I click on the point again, it just goes right back to my corner point. Do you see how that works? Then click on the handle to break the handles away from each other. But then if I really wanna play with it, I'm gonna go back to the white arrow tool that's up at the top here, the direct selection tool. And now I can start playing with how this is going to work, okay? Um, and what kind of a shape I'm gonna have. Now, a word of caution, a big, huge, stinking word of caution. Don't go crazy with this. because you don't want to make the frame the letter. And you also don't want to make the frame more important than the letter. So this could work where you want, say, two frames to kind of nestle into each other, but you don't necessarily want them to, um, uh, to overlap. So for instance, um, you could have something like this, um, you know, yeah, for instance, what, for instance? Um, let me get this guy back here to the way I want him to be. So snap. Okay, there we go. So now he's back to, to his good old rectangular self again. Let's say I wanted the M to nestle in with the Y here. I've got this shape. Um, let me just grab this guy and get him out of the way, okay? So let's say I have these two next to each other, and I want to work on, I want to get this a little bit better. So what I can do here is not only, not only can I modify points, but I can also add points, by the way, too. So watch this. I'm going to use my white arrow tool. I'm going to bring my bottom in here, but I don't necessarily want it to be quite like that. So I'm going to go over back to this pen tool. Remember the pen tool is here? Oh look, I can add and delete points from my frames as well. So I'm going to add an anchor point here. I can just click once, and now I can kind of drag it in. And now what I'll do is I'll go to my convert point tool. That's Shift C on the keyboard gets me right into there. And now I can just make that into a curve point. Okay, that's looking all right. Now I can go over here to my frame for the M, and I'm not going to tuck it in there quite yet because I don't want to, uh, it'll go underneath. Now, come on, be good. I got it too close. Okay, so now I can see the point. What's going on? There we go. So now I can see the point that I wanted here. I'm going to bring it back all the way to here. <clears throat> and I can bring this point forward a little bit. And then I probably need to add a point here to make this work since I want to make them pretty close to each other. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to the top here near the curve of the uh, M here. Add that. 
get the direction selection tool. Oh, it's moving the whole thing. I hate that. Click off, click back on. There we go. Now we got it. And now Shift C gets me the convert point tool. And now I can modify this pretty well. You know what? I'm going to take this guy down here and I'm going to convert him again. I convert him straight uh, across the bottom and then I'm going to break the handle. And that just gives me the ability to work with this curve a little better. And now I can grab the black selection tool and move the whole frame in and start playing with how they start to match up together. You see what I mean? Just to give him some space. Um, I might probably bring this one back here a little bit. Ugh. This point here back a little bit. Okay. Maybe rotate the handles a little bit. Bring this bottom point in a little bit. Okay. But what you're basically doing through this process is you're working with this negative space that's here and creating a new shape between the two of them and really kind of emphasizing what's going on inside or in between the letters, essentially, is what you're, you could be doing. Um, and it might work. It might absolutely look completely and utterly horrid and awful. So one of the things that I recommend you do is if you're going to start playing with frames like this and you're going to start going really far deep into it, save as. Go file save as and make a second InDesign file. And in that file you play with the frames and in your first file you leave them the same. That way if it doesn't work and it utterly destroys the whole composition and it looks horrid, you can always just go back to the previous version that saved and you can just trash this one and say, ah, oh, never mind. Okay? There's one other thing I wanted, you to sh I wanted to show you how to do fancy frames, and that is there are effects for the frames. So I'm going to, let's just delete this one. So there are also effects for the frames, and they're usually um, right here. See the FX tab here? Or you can go Window, and you can choose Effects, and you just double click on it and this window will come up and it will um, give you a whole bunch of options for your frame. Um, make sure preview is turned on and then I can play with drop shadows. See, it puts a shadow on the frame, okay? Um, you can play with an inner shadow, which is kind of weird, but it makes it look like the, the picture is sitting back, like almost like the page, the paper is a cutout. See, take a, uh, well, um, you, you can play with it. Uh, there's an outer glow, okay, that doesn't do really much right now. There's an inner glow, also not doing much. A bevel and emboss to make it look like it's popping up off the page like a button, you know. Um, satin. Um, there's a feather control, so it fades it in around the edges, which is rather nice. Okay, that's a cool, uh, that, can, that can be really cool. A directional feather works in a way that... Um, click on it, um, it goes in a certain angle. So you can um, be very specific on what side you want feathered. So here it's only the left side is being feathered and it's being feathered in a direction side to side. See that? If I change that angle, watch what happens. Okay, kind of cool, huh? Alright, so there's just a ton of stuff that you can do. A gradient feathering. Uh, you can set the gradient uh, and what direction you want it to feather in. So it kind of looks like lighting effects essentially. There's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do in the effects tab too. Um, there's also, ha, uh, forgot one last thing. You click on the frame right over here, stroke. Okay, click on the stroke and then right here you have borders that you can set into, okay, a frame and they can be all types, thick, thin, um, they can be dashed, dotted, whatever you want. You want to change the color, go over here and you see there's your border symbol here. Double click on that and it will ask you, you know, it'll give you a color, click OK. And now you can see that this horrendously ugly 
line that I have around my frame is red dashes. I wouldn't recommend choosing something like that because it looks pretty hideous, but at the same time, you can. Usually what people want to do with this is just a nice, simple, solid border, black, one pixel, usually does quite fine, um, and it just serves to kind of pop the background off. Now, as you're looking at it, it's hard to see sometimes with these strokes because you've got this little blue line that's in your way. See that? Those little blue lines that are around the edges. If you want to get rid of that, just to see what it looks like, to get rid of the boxes, go here to your View menu, and you select Preview. And it will get rid of the boxes for you for the time being so that you can see exactly what everything is going to look like on the page without any of those boxes. Once you're ready, take it back to normal view so that you can see the boxes because it's very helpful. So, fancy frames. I taught you a lot in the last uh, 15 minutes, but just for quick review, you can change the shape of the frames by clicking on the points. You can move them. You can change what kind of point they are with the convert point tool. Make them curvy, make them curvy in a corner, make them smooth curve, make them just a corner point with straight lines. Um, there's three basic types. You can put a border around your objects. You can also um, put other effects on your, on your frames like drop shadows and glow, glowing stuff and all that sort of thing, okay? Are there any questions at all about this and what we're doing? No. Okay, that's that.